congratulations. You are being rescued. Please do not resist. Finally, Star Wars that doesn't actually suck. If you had have told me a year ago that one of these two shows, Obi-Wan Kenobi or Andor, would restore my faith back into Star Wars, I would have said Obi-Wan Kenobi, without a doubt. Spoiler warning, it wasn't. Andor has completely restored my faith back into Star Wars. Star Wars finally seems to have a win on their hands. After the awful Book of Boba Fett and painfully frustrating Obi-Wan Kenobi, Andor seems to be swooping in to get Star Wars back on track. I've watched the first few episodes of Andor and this show is perfect so far. I want to make that clear. So far, this could fall off a cliff and end up being Book of Boba Fett levels are bad, but I really, really doubt that. Tony Gilroy and the showrunners just get it. Look, is this show the 10 out of 10 dopamine release of Luke showing up in Mando Season 2? Is it a major character-led show like Obi-Wan that gets the internet talking? Are a ton of people going to watch this show by Star Wars standards? No. And that's been proven by the lack of popularity this show has had online despite its great reviews. But regardless, this is the show that Star Wars fans have been waiting for for years. And what an unlikely character for it to come from. Look, Star Wars hasn't been all bad since Disney took over. The sequels obviously weren't great. The Rise of Skywalker especially. That film is just... Oh my god. And when Obi-Wan Kenobi came out and it was disappointing, that was basically me checking out with Star Wars. If you couldn't nail bringing Obi-Wan and Vader back, then what faith is there left to be had in anything Disney does with any characters going forward? You guys know how I feel about Disney Plus in general with the MCU video that I made a couple weeks ago. I am sick of Disney Plus, Marvel and Star Wars shows. The amount of episodes, how long they are, the type of shows, the production line nature of them all. I am just not liking Disney Plus shows in general. But regardless of that, Rogue One and The Mandalorian have been about the only things that Disney have done with Star Wars that I've actually enjoyed. But now we can add Andor to the mix because damn, I am loving Andor so far. We need more Star Wars projects like this, a more mature, and that's a word you're going to hear a lot in this video, mature, because damn, this show is not made for small kids. Unlike all of the other theme park television shows that Star Wars has been crapping out lately, because Andor delivers a darker, more mature story taking place in what feels like an actual lived-in Star Wars universe. Not a soundstage with a glorified fan film look like Obi-Wan. Andor is shaping up to be possibly the best slice of Star Wars content Disney has ever made. It's still early days, but to be perfectly honest, I don't think they could have gotten off to a better start. So let's take a deep dive as to why Andor is perfect so far and why I believe this show is the savior of Star Wars. It's not exactly a hot take to say that Star Wars in the past four to five years hasn't exactly been going very well. Yeah, we've had the Seizure Mandalore arc in Clone Wars Season 7, most of the Mandalorian and like a two minute scene in Obi-Wan. Apart from that, it's been pretty shit. It's been overly Disney-fied, it's been watered down with less focus on story and character and more focus on feeding the Disney Plus subscriber base with mindless cameos. But the opening 10 minutes of Andor is some of the most enjoyable Star Wars I have seen in years because it goes completely against virtually everything Star Wars has done, I'd say since about 2016, when a very good Star Wars film came out by the name of Rogue One. Don't worry, we will be talking about Rogue One later on. Quiet. These opening 10 minutes of Andor had me feeling like we had actually escaped a soundstage in an LA car park and had actually gone to a galaxy far, far away. The Blade Runner Star Wars Frankenstein aesthetic was incredible. The tone of this first 10 minutes was just perfect. We went to a brothel. Andor straight up executes a dude. Like this is just so far from the Disney production line of Star Wars trash that's been shoved down our throats for all these years. Eat it. Put it in your mouth and just eat it. God, eat it. I hate it. I don't care whether you hate it. You said Michael, you do it. All right. Michael. Eat it. Go eat ahead. it. Now, some people may find this direct contradiction in aesthetic and tone jarring. Like the fact we went from this to this may be a little too much for people to adjust to. But ask yourself, would you rather see whatever the hell <laughs> this is or what Andor delivers in just its opening 10 minutes? The decision is pretty easy to me. Now, I must admit, when I first saw that Andor's episodes runtimes were in the 30 to 40 minute range, I was like, here we go again. But the season will be 12 episodes long. 
That's double what Disney Plus tends to do with their shows. The 30 to 40 minute six episode season garbage that has plagued their streaming service seems to be a thing of the past. This tells me that the writers, the showrunners, the suits at Disney are actually willing to let a story be told the way it needs to be told. The fact that they got Tony Gilroy on board for this show despite him not being a massive lifelong Star Wars fan like almost every director that walks through Disney's doors is almost the blessing in disguise that this show needs. Tony Gilroy of course wrote and came back and helped with the reshoots of Rogue One and now he has returned for a reason to tell this story and to tell it right. And he has officially signed on for another season which will probably lead up directly to the events of Rogue One. Rest assured, if this was the factory filmmaking Disney garbage that we tend to see, then there is no shot that this guy is signing up for it. That's one of the main reasons I have so much faith in Andor and its direction going forward and how it's going to save Star Wars. Two seasons of this aesthetic, this tone, these characters, the darker, smarter, mature, grittier world of Star Wars. Sign me up. Now, some people may say that the show is too much of a slow burn. And would you be right in saying that? Yes, but is that a bad thing? Hell no. Look, if you're after big explosions, Jedi, Sith, lightsabers, easily consumable TV, then this show may not be your savior of Star Wars, which is fine. Andor is not going to be for the mass audiences like Obi-Wan Kenobi was. The hype online for this show is low, but it's no coincidence that this show has been met with massive amounts of praise for the people who have actually seen it. People are crowning it as the best Star Wars Disney has ever done. They're crowning it as the best Star Wars since the original trilogy. Are these people jumping the gun? Maybe, but you can certainly understand why those statements are being flung around. The fact people are so willing to make those claims just goes to show how fed up people have gotten with what Star Wars has delivered in recent years. Take Obi-Wan Kenobi for example. Obi-Wan was a freaking layup for Disney. Bringing Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen back, bringing Obi-Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader back, two of the most iconic and recognizable characters in cinematic history, whilst putting a focus on Obi-Wan's PTSD from the events of Revenge of the Sith and Obi-Wan's and Vader's relationship. You couldn't possibly mess that up, right? Well, they did. The fact they couldn't even nail this despite being a complete and utter layup is just downright infuriating. Look, making films and shows is hard. Four years at film school has shown me that firsthand. I get it, it's not easy. And I'm more sympathetic when others might not be because of that experience. After all, it is easy to be an armchair expert. But a critically adored Obi-Wan show is a walk in the park for professionals of this standard with the backing of Disney. Yet they still couldn't do it. And the major reasons as to why were so avoidable. A piss poor budget for such a massive show, an over reliance on the volume, short episodes in an already short series, a writer that doesn't know a damn thing about Star Wars and adding a character into the show that took spotlight away from the two reasons we were there in the first place. Look, Obi-Wan wasn't entirely bad. It gave us one of my favorite moments in Star Wars history. Anakin, Anakin's gone. I'm sorry, Anakin, for all of it. I am not your failure, Obi-Wan. You didn't kill Anakin Skywalker. I did. And my friend is truly dead. That scene only went for about a minute. My point is, people like myself were just so disheartened with the critical failure of Obi-Wan Kenobi. If you can't get that right, then what can you get right? So going into Andor, people had basically had enough. Is Andor's positive reception linked to people's low expectations being blown out of the water? It's absolutely possible. If Andor came out directly after season two of The Mandalorian, then maybe the response wouldn't be as positive as it is right now. But the fact of the matter is, that's not the situation we're in. We're coming off the back of two massively disappointing Star Wars shows in a row, and people are just over the moon that Star Wars has finally changed direction. And it seems to be in an exciting, fresh, darker, and more mature one. One of the major complaints I've seen people have with Andor is it doesn't feel like Star Wars. And I will say, whilst I understand where you're coming from with this, I strongly disagree. 
In my opinion, there have been three things that have nailed what Star Wars is since the original trilogy and the prequels. Those being the Clone Wars TV show, The Mandalorian, and Rogue One. Each of them for completely different reasons. Star Wars is such a vast and diverse universe that virtually any form of storytelling or tone is possible to pull off. The original trilogy gave us this visual manifestation of hope fighting against an overpowering tyrant. Jedi, Sith, Light and Dark and the prequels delivered the deeper Jedi mythos and various conflicts of Star Wars. Rogue One was just a straight up war movie. The Mandalorian was essentially a space western. There are so many ways that you can approach Star Wars. Not everything needs to involve a lightsaber to be deemed Star Wars. Look, I'm entertained by the Jedi, the Sith, lightsabers and all the pew pew in the world. But to be honest, I think the direction Star Wars needs to go is this more grounded and or like direction. Yeah, we'll always have our lightsaber wielding characters and their stories to tell, like with Ahsoka and the Acolyte. And God, I hope they do a damn old Republic trilogy one day. But... Not everything needs to involve a lightsaber to be considered Star Wars. We're so used to seeing the daily life of a Jedi, a bounty hunter, someone important. But Andor gives us a peek into the life of a virtual nobody. It gives us a peek behind the curtain of the nobodies of the Star Wars galaxy in general. Take a scene from Attack of the Clones, for example. When Obi-Wan sits down at the bar, Pick any character in the background and imagine what their story is like as a simple person living in this incredible galaxy. What's their perspective? We'd never normally see what that's like because we're too busy focusing on the Obi-Wan Kenobis and Anakin Skywalkers of the Star Wars galaxy. Shows like Andor give us a look into what it's actually like to be the everyday man in a not so everyday galaxy. And I think that's such an interesting angle to take Star Wars. Not everything needs to be about the Skywalkers. Not everything needs galaxy ending stakes. We know where this story ends up and obviously the stakes do end up high. Just ask Alderaan. But the journey to that point on a ground level basis is relatively unexplored. And that's where Andor holds its value. It's a look at a familiar story told from the ground up through a whole new lens and it is working so far. The fact we're seeing things like civilians wake up to go to work, guys swiping in and out of their labor intensive jobs, seeing the little guy go about their everyday life whilst rebellions are being formed and empires rule dominant across the galaxy is interesting. It's a new angle of telling the same story, viewing things from an entirely new perspective. The character-driven, boots-on-the-ground, dirty work way that Tony Gilroy has pulled it off so far is simply perfect for the story being told. The best compliment I can give Andor is that it doesn't feel like any other Disney Plus show. That's essentially the ultimate praise. It feels like I'm watching an HBO drama. That is what Star Wars needs to do going forward. All the Disney Plus Star Wars shows have this same look and feel to them. As great as The Mandalorian is, it does have that distinct Disney Plus feel to it. Granted, the story and character work in The Mandalorian is great, but that look and feel when translated over to Star Wars shows that don't have the same level of character work and story, like Boba Fett, it's bland. It's soulless. It feels like an expensive fan film. Andor does not feel that way. It feels like Blade Runner 2049 and Rogue One came together, and how is that not a good thing? And from all accounts, the press that have seen the further episodes of Andor say that the show continues with what made the first three episodes so great. So it looks like we're in steady hands going forward. Now I must say, one of Andor's greatest strengths is the magic this show manages to recapture from the original Star Wars whilst injecting something entirely new. Andor managed to recapture the essence of Star Wars 10 times more in its opening 10 minutes than anything in the sequel trilogy. The sequel trilogy felt like a Disney theme park ride. And I mean, one trip to Ferrix or Morlana 1 is so much more refreshing than our 10 millionth return to Tatooine. Tatooine is cool, but Jesus, seriously, how many more times do we need to go there? We'll be heading back to Coruscant in future episodes of Andor, but apart from our time with the Jedi in the prequels, we haven't really spent much time on Coruscant in live action. Andor is the type of show that would actually make Coruscant a character in of itself. When you can make a location basically a character in a show or film, it adds so much more to the overall story and its characters. 
Think of Gotham in The Batman. Think of LA in Blade Runner. I must say it's truly refreshing that Tony Gilroy actually came out and said that Andor wasn't going to be one of those cameo type shows and that fills me with so much confidence as cameos are just a way out of lazy writing. We see so many Star Wars and MCU projects use a cameo to hit the nostalgia boner of viewers to throw their dopamine through the roof so they don't ask questions on the floors of the script. Don't get me wrong, cameos when used sparingly and ones that aren't integral to the plot and the characters you've been building up are just harmless fun. Take these two from Rogue One for example. Was this cameo contrived? Maybe. Was it harmless? Absolutely. Honestly, if you took Luke Skywalker, Ahsoka and Cad Bane out of the Book of Boba Fett, then that thing would be damn near unwatchable because the writing and character work is so poor. Even the Boba Fett actor Tamara Morrison wasn't a fan of Boba Fett in this show. But Tony Gilroy clearly has a lot of confidence in Andor if he's publicly stating that the cameo thing isn't going to fly in this show. And I mean, I'd take hours of scenes like Stellan Skarsgård's Luthen meeting Cassian with smart dialogue, great character work and subtext over a contrived Cad Bane scapegoat cameo any day. Look, Andor might not be for everyone, but to be honest, I think that's a good thing. When Star Wars tries to appeal to everyone, it's just more of the same. If this show appeals to you, then damn, is it going to hit home as one of the best Star Wars projects of recent time? If it's not made for you, then that's perfectly fine as well. Realism grounds this show, and for some people, that's just not enough for an escape to a galaxy far, far away. Now, in order for me to justify why I think Andor is perfect so far and essentially a savior of sorts for the Star Wars brand, I need to dedicate a segment of this video to Rogue One, a Star Wars story. The film that brought us Cassian Andor in the first place, and it's the film that the show is clearly seeking inspiration from. Not to mention it's about the only Star Wars film that both sides of the fandom, at least for the most part, can seem to agree on that it's actually good. Rogue One is in my opinion one of the best Star Wars movies that we have and the best Star Wars movie to come from Disney by far. A lot of people disregard Rogue One as trash because it's a Disney Star Wars movie and just throw it together with the sequels which I think is really unfortunate. Because not only did it treat legacy characters with respect, it introduced brand new characters and actually put character first which you would think would be a given when it comes to the development on a show or film but as the sequels suggest, that's not the case. Disney doesn't roll like that with a lot of their content. But perhaps the best thing that Rogue One did was it gave us a peek behind the curtain of the Rebellion. It exposed a shady side to what we had thought were the good guys for over 30 years. Since 1977 all the way through to 2016 when Rogue One came out, we were always under the impression that the Rebellion was good, the Empire was bad, black and white. But Rogue One decided to add shades of grey to that. Now, I know EU material had touched on this sort of stuff in the past, but in terms of the mainstream films, the Rebellion was mostly glamorized as the symbol of hope in the original trilogy. Which isn't a knock on the original trilogy by any means, the Rebellion was what it always needed to be in that trilogy, a Rebellion. You know, a cause to get behind in the fight against the Empire, but Rogue One gave us a massive peek behind the curtain of the Rebellion, the good and the bad. Much like what Andor is doing. The spies, the assassins, the boots on the ground, the soldiers that had to do the dirty work, that had to sabotage and kill for the cause, and that was no better showcased than with the character of Cassian Andor who I thought was the best character to come out of Rogue One, which is high praise as I think Jyn Erso, Galen Erso and Orson Krennic were all very good characters in their own right. But Cassian stood out amongst the crowd as the embodiment of the shady side of the rebellion. The soldier that will do what is necessary for the cause, the one that follows orders, the one that kills if need be. His introductory scene pretty much just sums his character up, tells us all we need to know. He kills an unarmed man. And then later in the film, he's ready to act on the non-official order of assassinating Galen Erso. He also has an absolutely incredible scene where we learn so much about his character. I had every chance to pull the trigger, but did I? We don't all have the luxury of deciding when and where we want to care about something. Suddenly the rebellion is real for you. Some of us live it. I've been in this fight since I was six years old. You're not the only one who lost everything. And some of us just decided to do something about it. You can't talk your way around this. I don't 
left. In just that one scene, we learn so much about him, what he's done, where he's come from, what he has to do for the rebellion and what the cause means for people like him. And in Andor, we get to see these kind of events play out because Andor is obviously a prequel to Rogue One. I can't believe after re-watching Rogue One and watching this scene that there was ever a time that I thought an Andor show was a bad or boring idea. Rogue One not only put the war back in Star Wars, but it is perhaps the most mature Star Wars film that we have ever gotten, which is ironic because it came when the IP was in the hands of Disney. The idea that not everything is black and white is something I enjoy so much about Rogue One. Just because you wear an Imperial uniform doesn't mean you're bad. Just because you're a rebel doesn't mean you're a saint. The moral shades of grey are on both sides. Gareth Edwards and Tony Gilroy really created something special with Rogue One and Andor is continuing it. That peek behind the curtain of the rebellion is such an eye-opening experience, taking everything you believed in and showing you how it really works. And this works as a perfect sort of analogy for anything great in life. It kind of reminds me of the big blockbuster movies that we watch. We enjoy the spectacle. We love it. It's pure entertainment and escapism. But if we caught a peek behind the curtain of the VFX artist being worked into the ground to bring it to life, it changes your perspective entirely. And this spans to pretty much anything in real life, anything we consume or glamorize, there is almost always a dark side to it in some way, shape or form that can shatter the illusion. And Rogue One and Andor tells us that the rebellion is no different. Rogue One was just never afraid to go there, to actually go dark. Now, am I saying that Star Wars needs to go dark in order for it to work? No. But Star Wars doesn't have to be an MCU joke fest, which is exactly what they've tried to do on several occasions. Like when Poe Dameron and General Hux were engaging in mum jokes, when Boba Fett was chasing a droid around a kitchen. My point is, Star Wars is so determined on replicating the MCU's easily consumable formula that it mostly completely loses what makes Star Wars great. And it's films like Rogue One and shows like Andor that show Star Wars doesn't necessarily need to go dark to be great, but it does need moments of weight. That's when it packs the best punch. Can you have moments of levity in great Star Wars? Yes, obviously. I rewatched Rogue One before Andor and I was actually surprised with how funny that it was. There are a lot of explosions for two people blending in. Freeze, right there. You're right. I should just wait on the ship. Are you kidding me? I'm blind. He's taking us to the quiet. Star Wars has always been funny, but Star Wars, when it really hones in on a more mature direction, is when it works best. It's always been that way, and Rogue One showcases that perfectly. And another thing worth mentioning is that we actually saw a lot of the inner workings of the Empire and how they operate in their ranks in Rogue One. So not only did we get the peek behind the curtain of the Rebellion, but we got it for the Empire as well. And I'm so glad that Rogue One was willing to go there. In hindsight, it's the most important Star Wars movie to come out since Revenge of the Sith, not only with what's on screen, but what it means for the direction of Star Wars going forward. A dive into deeper, more mature storytelling, boots on the ground, condensed smaller scale stories. Rogue One gave us all the things that makes Star Wars great. Hope, resistance against overwhelming odds, light and dark, sacrifice for a greater cause, all these things that come together to ignite the magic of Star Wars. Rogue One nailed it. And it seems so far, Andor is continuing it flawlessly. Overall, I think Andor is a smart, grounded, mature, gritty retelling of a familiar story, but through an entirely different lens. And it is absolutely working so far. Look, the show could fall off a cliff towards its end, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. If it keeps pace with its first few episodes, specifically the third episode, I can see the show completely outshining almost anything from the Disney Star Wars era. But regardless of what I think, Andor is without question a savior of sorts for Star Wars. Star Wars has been wallowing in its own disappointment for a couple of years now. But it seems like Andor is the light in a new chapter of Star Wars storytelling. And man, I am down for it.